In this session, we will see the, how we have to draw the equivalent uh, circuit diagram for an alternator. We know that when the alternator is connected to load, there are different effect or because different of factors, the terminal voltage is varying with the, the generated voltage. One of the most important factor which affecting the, the terminal voltage is the armature reaction. Because we know that the armature reaction is having the effect of uh, cross magnetizing, demagnetizing and the strengthening of the magnetic field because of the, the nature of the different loads. Means for the different loads the effect of the armature reaction is the different. There is a positive magnetizing effect if you are connecting a resistive load. If there is a demagnetizing effect, if you are connecting the the inductive load, and if you are, it is a strengthening the main field because of that, there is a strengthening of the magnetic field. That is, we know that the the generated voltage of alternator is proportional to the flux. If the main flux is varying, therefore the generated is generated voltage is also varying. That will come back. Means what I mean is if there is a effect of the armature flux on a magnetic field, main magnetic field, there is a variation of the main magnetic field. Because of that variation, the generated voltage is varying. If the generated voltage is varying, then ultimately the terminal voltage is also varying. That is one of the factors which affect the terminal voltage is the armature reaction. The armature reaction has got, we know that in the last few sessions that was studied in the case of the resistive load, the effect is the cross magnetic. There is a strengthening of the magnetic flux here, there is a weakening here, similarly weakening of the magnetic flux here and strengthening of the main magnetic flux under the, the leading voltage. Then ultimately the armature reaction in the case of the resistive load is the cross magnetizing effect. The cross magnetizing effect that we will see. Because of that, it is an effect on the magnetic field. Then this whatever drawn is the, the effect of the armature reaction when if you are connecting it a load. That is resistive load. Then here we are considering here it is a pure inductive load so that the current in the coil lacks the generated voltage by an angle of 90 degree. In this case, the effect is demagnetizing effect. Means the flux produced by the armature is opposing the, the main flux. So that the total strength of the magnetic field is decreasing, thereby the generated voltage is also decreasing. Then the third parameter that is the third type of load. This is a, once again for lagging power factor. You can see here. The armature flux is opposing main flux, so that what I am getting here is the resultant flux here. Therefore, these are the waveform for the main magnetic field, then the resultant flux, and this is your armature flux. Then, when it comes to the the leading means that is a current in this coil is leading the voltage under n pole by an angle of 90 degree. That is, I am considering one single coil. In this case. That is a flux produced by the armature flux which is aiding to the magnetic field. That is a strengthening of the, the magnetic field. Therefore, the, in the total means the armature reaction which is affecting the, the magnitude of the, the main magnetic flux in the case of lagging and leading load and it is has got a cross magnetizing effect in the case of a resistive load. Then we will with this uh, the background, just we will draw the, the equivalent circuit diagram for the, the synchronous generator. This is how once again I am drawing the waveforms and the vector diagram for leading power factor load. In that case, it is a total flux is, that is the armature flux is aiding to the main flux, we are getting resultant flux, therefore strengthening of the magnetic flux we are getting here. That is, in the case of the generator to represent, what we are interested is, 
what is the available voltage, how much your current we are getting across the load, then what is the power delivered by the, the generator, how much power you are getting across the load, all those things analyze needs the equivalent circuit diagram of an alternator. For that, we know that what exactly I want is there is an alternator. And this alternator I am representing it is a per phase basis, it is connected to load. It is one of the phase of a three phase alternator I am drawn here. Then here the current delivered is I will call I and it is what you are calling as ZL. And the voltage across this is what you are calling is B, that is the terminal voltage. And the voltage actually generated in the armature has got E value here. Okay, the of course there is a I here. Means the value of E that is a generated voltage E, we know that the value of E is equal to 4.44 phi F K C K D into T. For a particular machine, the number of turns is constant. Once the coil is worn for a short pitch or a full pitch, KC is the constant. Once the winding is worn, the distribution winding, the KD is also fixed. And the speed of the machine is fixed, the number of volts is also fixed, the frequency is also fixed. Then it is a numerical constant 4.4. Therefore, in this case, E is proportional to 5. If the phi is varying, then the generated voltage is also varying. If phi is varying and generated voltage is also varying, means this flux is varying because of armature flux. There are two fluxes, one is phi a and phi a. Because of the phi a, there is a variation in the phi. A. That is nothing but the phi. If there is any change in the phi, then the generated voltage also change. Therefore, the terminal voltage P you are not getting equal to E, not equal to E, because one reason is that because of armature reaction. One is called as armature reaction. That is a one of the factor because you are not getting the generated voltage across the load because when the current starts flowing, it is producing its own magnetic flux. Because of that, it is modifying the, the main flux. Then when the flux is varying, the generated voltage is also varying. Thereby, the terminal voltage ultimately it is affecting the, the terminal voltage V. Then we know that there is a current start flowing in the armature here. There are conductors here, armature conductor. When current start flowing in this armature conductors, each armature conductors has got their inherent resistors. Winding, that is a winding per phase has got its inherent resistor. When the current start flowing, when current start flowing in IA, that is so that when it is connected, when it is generating the voltage, it is start delivering the current. Means the current start flowing in the armature conductor. Means armature conductor has got a resistance RA. Therefore, there is a drop in this resistance that is what I am calling this IARA drop. Therefore, the second factor which affecting the terminal voltage V is because of IARA drop. Means the second point which is affecting the, the generated voltage is armature resistance. Armature resistance drop. Because of this, there is voltage V is varying with respect to E. Then the third factor which affecting S, there is a third factor which is affecting the terminal voltage is there is a leakage reactance. That is what you are calling as XL. Whenever the current starts flowing, then there is a leakage reactance stop that is IAXL. Therefore, the third factor which affecting the, the terminal voltage is the third one is the third one is 
लीकेज रिएक्टर स्टॉप लीकेज रिएक्टर्स ड्रॉप लीकेज रिएक्टर्स दैट फॉर दैट इज द ई दैट इज द टोटल जनरेटेड वोल्टेज ई राइटिंग हियर दैट इज ई एस दैट इज द जनरेटेड वोल्टेज बी प्लस इफेक्ट ऑफ आर्मीचर रिएक्शन दैट इज द करस्पॉन्डिंग वोल्टेज प्लस आई ए आर ए ड्रॉप प्लस आई ए एक्स एल ड्रॉप दैट ग्यूज द जनरेटेड वोल्टेज then here you can see here because of the armature reaction because of this armature reaction how much there is a change in the variation in the voltage that you have to model you have to model the what is the the effect of armature reaction on the the voltage okay it can be modeled at taking a fictitious reactance of xa it is a taken as a fictitious reactance as a I will come back to this in detail. That is, I will make it. What I am doing here is, we know that that is E is depending upon it is voltage across the terminal plus. There is a drop in the armature if you are adding IRA plus IXL. Then there is a variation of the voltage because of armature reaction. It is act not an actual voltage drop. It is a variation of the flux phi because of the flux is varying. Then the voltage is also the varying. Okay, this can be modeled. It is taken as a one fictitious drop across the. armature reactors that is it is represented by a fictitious reactors that is what you are calling is armature react armature reactors it is called as armature reactors that is we are assuming that there is a fictitious reactors xa which is causing a voltage drop but not a reactors is making a drop in the alternator but it is because of variation of main flux therefore if you are writing the equation e in the form of v plus ia ra plus ia xl armature reaction drop is taken as ia xa ia xa therefore it is all the vector sum these are all vector sum therefore once again i write e is equal to v Plus I R A. I'll take here I common. Then I'm adding X L plus X A. Then I'm from last two terms. Last two term I'm adding X L plus X A. That is we are treating this X L plus X A as a synchronous reactors. X L plus X A is represented by X S. Therefore. the e can be written as v plus i r a plus i x s that is nothing but it is v plus i a r a plus j x s r a plus j x s is nothing but your synchronous impedance that is v plus i z s with this equation e you can draw the the equivalent circuit diagram of the the alternator therefore the same thing is explained here very clearly just to look at the the points to be considered here that is the voltage is varying across the terminals of the load because of because of distortion of the air gap in the magnetic field Caused by the current flowing in the stator, that is what you are calling as armature reaction. And the second point is because of self-inductance of the armature coil, that is a drop, I X L drop. And the third cause of variation of the terminal voltage is because of whenever the current starts flowing in the armature conductor, it has got inherent resistance. 
there is a resistance drop across the armature conductors. Therefore, then there is a variation caused by this armature reaction that is modeled with the help of a fictitious reactance XA. I just told you that is E is proportional to flux. The flux is depending upon effect of the armature reaction. Therefore, whenever there is a variation of the, the main flux because of armature reaction, then because of armature reaction, how much voltage is variation that is taken with the help of a fictitious reactance Xa. That is, Xa is nothing but armature reaction. What got it? Actually, what happens? Flux is varying, thereby there is a reduction or increase in the voltage that is modeled with the help of a fictitious reactance Xa that is called as the armature reactance. That is called as fictitious reactance Xa in the armature binding. The value of Xa is such that Ixa represents voltage drop due to armature reaction. Means whatever reactance we are assuming, fictitious, it is imaginary reactance. If you are making product of I into Xa or Iaxa, that is equivalent to either increase or decrease of the voltage because of armature reaction. Therefore, I am adding there are two reactances existing in the, the synchronous generator. One is the leakage reactance, another one is fictitious reactance of Xa. If you are adding these two, then what we are getting is synchronous reactance. Therefore, electrically speaking, we have got a generated voltage key, the terminal voltage V, leakage reactance Xn, armature resistance Ra and fictitious reactance Xa. If we are adding Xl and Xa, then what we are getting is Xs. Here, the same thing is represented. That is, there is generated voltage E, the terminal voltage V and it is a delivering current of I. Then, there is a drop in the armature resistance that is represented by a resistance Ra again. And there is a leakage reactance that is represented by Xl. Then there is a armature reaction is taken care by this fictitious reactance Xa. Therefore, Ra, Xl, Xa. This is a mathematical model of a synchronous generator. Then further we can reduce this diagram by adding Xl and Xa. I told you some of Xl and Xa is called as synchronous reactors. It is known that synchronous reactance that is represented by Xs. That is represented by Xs. Then if you look into the, the sum of Ra and Xs, what you are calling is the synchronous impedance of a synchronous generator. Then if you have established the relation between the generator voltage E and the terminal voltage V in that case that is E is equal to V plus drop across resistance plus drop across synchronous reactance. Therefore, V is equal to Ia into Zs or V plus Ia into Zs is nothing but Ra plus Jxs. This is how we have to represent the, the alternator equivalent circuit.